where your treasure is, there also is where your heart will be. Did you ever really think about that? Did you ever give thought to the fact that the things you desire and you want and you run after, that's really who you are? It's not just the things you want, it's what you want to be. Um, I was talking to my cousin's daughter. Uh, she's a, a teacher in all places and a principal in Woodside, California, which is in the middle of Silicon Valley. And there is no property in the town of Woodside, which is a small community, that is under $3 million. That's the land, not the house. So everybody who's there doesn't know what to do with all the money they have, but go crazy. And she said that it's just unbelievable to see what children want and what they do and what they think. And she said, and you go there and you begin to act and think just like they do. You begin to think the things of this world are really what life is all about. Until something comes along, a tragedy, or a hardship, or a health problem. And you begin to think, oh my God, there's more to it than running after the dollar, running after fame, after youth, after health, all these things that are bound to go. Nothing that we pursue is lasting. No one lives forever. No one. When you're young, you think, oh, my whole life is going to be like this forever. But it isn't. When you get old, you say, oh, I have so little time left. And all of a sudden, you're gone. Things we invested in. Look at our beautiful house. Look what we've done. And three years later, five years later, ten years later, we need a new roof. We need new plumbing. We need new everything else. And everything is starting all over again. So why don't we listen? Why doesn't it make sense to us what the Lord says? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And in the gospel from last Sunday, the Lord says, whatever you do to me, you do, whatever, excuse me, whatever you do to your brother, you do to me. We forget that our life is not about things, it's about relationships. It's about the relationship we have with each other, about the relationship we have with God, what is lasting and what isn't lasting. Uh, there was an American comedian and his wife. They were George Burns and Gracie Allen. Some of you may have heard of them. Some of you may have been around when they were around. And George Burns lived to be 100 years old. And on his 100th birthday, they had a big, big celebration in Hollywood, and they said, so what advice do you have to give us now that you've reached 100? He said, if I had known or understood that I was going to be 100, I would have changed so much of what I'd done, and I would have taken a lot better care of myself and my family. I think we could all say that. We only think of the now. We only think of ourselves. We find that, you know, uh, one of my nephews uh, told his father that shocked his father to death because he was a psychiatrist. And the kid, the father said to him, don't you know I do all this for you? Don't you know what I've done to you and you still do these crazy things? Don't you know? And the son turned around and said, I didn't ask to be born. You're my father. That's what you're supposed to do when you're a father. You don't get rewarded for what you're supposed to do. And he says, why are you yelling at me? You're the father, you gave me life, so why yell at me? And my brother was shocked. He said, uh, first thing I want to do is tie him to the clothesline and send him out across the yard. And the next thing I want to do is say, forgive me. How often do we forget about each other? We don't remember that everybody goes through struggles. Everybody goes through hardships. And where do we turn to get our comfort and our solace? We turn to the crazy world that doesn't know a thing about anything. We have such a glorious place that God has given us in this world. And what do we do? We fight with each other. We go to war. We destroy each other. We destroy the land. We don't care. 
because we don't get it. We think it's going to go on forever, and we think it's all about us, but it's not. And so today we begin the great fast. The great fast is not a time of punishment. The great fast is not something that we should run from. It's something we should run to. Because the fast tells us all that you are doing is not enough. Because what you're doing is what your heart's calling you to do, where your treasure is. And our treasure is not in the world. And so today the church is giving us the benefit of fasting, the benefit of prayer, the benefit of reflection. So we don't get lost along the way. And we all get lost. We all get lost. Parents get upset and scream at their kids. Kids curse their parents out and say, don't tell me what to do. I'm gonna live my own life. We're all crazy because our heart is in the wrong place. And we think we're gonna last. I thought I was gonna live a lot longer than I <laughs> I thought I was going to be here forever and I was never going to get sick and everything was fine. You don't know. You don't know what's coming. But we do know this, that God loves us. We do know this. If we do to our brothers out of love, that's all of us, our family and everything else, God will reward us and we will have eternal life. But if we think things are tough now, can you imagine the worst possible day you've ever had in your life and multiply that by eternity? That's what's gonna happen if we don't reach the kingdom. Our life is going to be utterly miserable and it will never end. But if we love, if we love one another, if we forgive one another, we don't judge one another, we constantly seek the Lord, we will have life eternal. We will have joy forever. We will have fulfillment forever. So this is the uh, annual tune-up on your auto. We're all going to go through the Great Lent and clean up all the flaws we have and all the craziness we have, all the impurities in our mind, all the anger, all the judgment, all the doubt. We get to clean it up and get back on track and say, Lord, I am wretched, I am sinful. I have not followed you. Get me back on track, forgive me, help me. Help me to become that which you made. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.